Hi again, everyone, and welcome back to an all-new episode of the Grand Valley State Sports Report here in WGVU. I'm your host, Steve Lloyd-Jones, and here's what's coming up for you tonight. GVSU women's basketball goes back-to-back, -back, continuing their hot streak. We caught up with GVSU head football coach Scott Wooster and dug deep into what he will look to bring to Grand Valley this fall. GVSU men's basketball stayed locked in with two more wins this week. And our feature takes a look at the women's basketball team and some key contributors so far this year. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. Three wins in a row now for Cornell men's Laker men's basketball team. GVSU topped Michigan Tech and Northern Michigan last week and now stands at 15 and 9 overall and 9 and 5 in the GLIAC. Due to practice schedule constraints, we caught up with Coach Mann over Zoom. Well, I thought we did a great job on the glass. I thought, I thought we did a, a really a, a great job on the glass and down the stretch, and, and you would see this in, in both games, but down the stretch right around six minutes and in, in, in out, um, we are still building. Other teams are not building at that time. They are dwindling. And so we, we play and we practice, like our practices are predicated upon that energy, effort, and focus all the way through. And so our guys are normally, even if they're winded, mentally they can still play make good decisions in that. Um, and so I thought that's what happened. I thought we did a good job trying to wear those guys down. Uh, throughout the game, uh, like Michigan Tech is a really good team. Uh, anytime we left a guy open, anytime we forgot about a guy, anytime we were late to get to a guy, they hit a three-point shot. And uh, that's a credit to them. They can really shoot the ball. They are a good team, they're a young team, so they're gonna continue to get better. Our team is semi-young as well. I just think we we bring a, a resiliency and a, a brand of defense and rebounding, especially toward the end of the game, that will allow us to have a chance to finish strong. Well, um, the one thing about Northern is Northern keeps coming. They never stop coming at you. And even in the last couple minutes or the last 30 seconds, I mean, you never feel like you you free of the game until the game is over and you finish shaking hands. It's almost like I'm waiting for the official to sit, blow the whistle and say, okay, we got another minute and a half on the clock. Um, they are a very good team, a scary team to play against because they, they play really smart. They can hit shots, but what they do, they got a nice balance in terms of hitting shots, posting it at the rim and driving the ball. They can do it all. And so you cannot get caught up in the fact that they can hit shots from three because they didn't even kill us from three. They were seven for 20. But early in the game, some of those get like our guys sometimes think, okay, I got to move out near my guy because he'll hit a three on me. When in fact, that's what their offenses made, make you think. And then next thing you know, they're driving the ball right down your throat um, or posting it and finishing at the rim. And I, I just think for, for that team, um, offensively, we had to get the ball inside over and over and over and over again. And then we hit a couple of threes that, that, that helped. But uh, at the end of the day, when, when we played that game, it was all about getting the ball inside and finishing at the rim. It's a man's game in the paint, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to put pressure on them to have to defend us inside and then the game again with the pace, I thought the pace got to him towards the end.
TVSU women's basketball now has a two-game lead in the GLIAC after wins over Michigan Tech and Northern Michigan in Allendale. Head coach Mike Williams joins us this week to tell us the latest and also a big milestone for you as well, Mike. We'll get to that in a bit. But for the team standpoint, you had uh, Michigan Tech and Northern Michigan, good teams uh, that came to Allendale, got both wins. You know, um, it was a good week. Obviously, you play the two UP teams. We split up there, lost a close one at Tech, and again, didn't play poorly. They played better than we did. Um, but I thought we had a lot of pop in both games. We, we did something with the Davenport week. We had that single game. Um, <clears throat> you know, so we didn't play on Thursday. So we did. We took Wednesday off, just you know, shut our kids down. It's late in the season. You know, you're playing teams a second time. Not a lot. You know, you, you, you still prepare. You do things, but you don't have as much going on. Mm -hmm. Your players are more familiar with the teams you're playing. So we just took Wednesday off. Um, and, and we thought it worked. We thought it really helped you know, for our legs, our pop, our energy, and, and probably a lot of mental, you know, uh, focus. You, you know, just kind of clear your mind a little bit. And so we did the same thing this week. We took Tuesday off. So we practiced Monday, took Tuesday off, prepped Wednesday, played, you know, Thursday, Friday. And um, I, I thought it helped again. I thought <laughs> against Michigan Tech, you know, and a lot of pop, thought we you know, had a lot of energy. Uh, we were active, you know, I think at both ends of the ball. And I, and I think it was a, a good thing. Well, you get the win 60 to 43 over Michigan Tech. Now, remember at that point when you're playing them, there's what basically just the one game difference. So now with that head to head win, you get a two game advantage in the conference sitting atop that spot. In both of the games this week, Mike, you're talking about that pop. That, that second quarter is where you really grabbed control of each of these games. Tell us more about that. You know, I, I think we opened up both games defending really well. Um, and, well, I, I take that back. Michigan Tech, you know, I thought we gave them open looks. Uh, so you kind of you kind of look at the film and say, did we do a good job defending and taking away their threes, or, or did they just miss them? And so maybe it was a combination of both. But I thought it took a little bit for our offense to get warmed up. And uh, when it did, I thought the ball moved. I thought we got great looks. I thought our kids were active off the ball. Um, you know, eyes were up. We had good vision. And, and we put up a lot of points in both quarters and allowed us to kind of Kind of like you said, Steve, kind of separate uh, in that second quarter. Yeah, you you know, for the game, you're right. It wasn't necessarily great shooting always for you. You get six threes. You shoot about 40% overall, but the defense was there. Out-rebounding Tech, 39-27, uh, 13.6 boards for Paige Van Stee and 10 points for Ellie Drosty in this one as you get that win. So a great win. And as always, the, th the uh, Thursday victories kind of springboard you into uh, the Saturday games. So the Northern game might touch on this a bit because you get out, you're playing well, you get a big lead, and all of a sudden Northern slowly starts reeling you back in as this game goes along. Yeah, and it <laughs> happened fast. You know, it was, it was nothing, you know, you kind of look at some different areas of the game, what happened. I think it was just a combination of a lot of things. I don't think I... Was uh, did a great job being composed in that stretch. It kind of got on some players for some things they did, and it just kind of snowballed on us. And, and they played well. You know, they came out and they hit some big shots, hit a couple threes, got a couple steals, breakout steals. Um, you know, we just we couldn't hit the rim. A couple shots we came down and <laughs> you know couldn't find the basket. But you know those things happen. And like I you know I talked to Brian on the radio. I said you know I had just say we're going to beat Northern by 12 or 14 points mm -hmm. at home. You're going to take it. But when you get up yeah. by 26 and that lead whittles down to you know seven or eight, um, it doesn't look as good. But it still is. And and you know we got it's a, it's uh, things we got to work through. You know, we got we got to address that. We are still got to remember we're still kind of young. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of players have played minutes and played before, so it's good. It's good for these guys. It's good for us, and I think it'll help us moving forward. Would be remiss without uh, asking you about uh, your thoughts on the 200 wins now for you as a head coach. What, what's that like? That's quite an accomplishment. Well, you know, and I and I say this, and I and it's it's the truth. Like I walked into a great situation. You know, we just man, Coach Burgess, Coach Sayers. Um, culture was there, the players were there. Um, we made a couple tweaks, not many. Didn't have to do a lot. You know, the recruiting class coming in, I think, was uh, the class that was that had the most wins in school history. Um, you know, we, they had some players coming in. We added a couple to that mix. Um, and then just, just the fact that you've got a great staff. You know, Phil's been here for, you know, he was here two years previous, my, my getting here, and just does a super job. We added Amanda Parker. 
um, you know, a, a veteran coach. Uh, and, and I just think there's a lot of things. Grand Valley is a special place. And, you know, it's just um, the winning is kind of taking care of itself. And I, and I think as we move forward, looking at the players we got coming in, if they can buy into, you know, to winning, to, to, you want to be successful, I think we can continue this for a few more years. Well, certainly hope that's the uh, the case there. Again, congrats on that big milestone uh, and good job well done through the year here. My goodness. Number one in the conference with these wins and a big couple this week on the road. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, it. Steve. Thank you. Well, last week we caught up with GVSU head football coach Scott Wooster to get his thoughts on signing day. But while we had coach around, we asked him a few more questions about what he hopes to be able to bring to Lubber Stadium this fall. Here's the final piece of our interview. Take a listen. Behind closed doors, take us inside there. What, what is your message to the team right now? I mean, as a, there's a full off season ahead. Yeah. Spring practice is as important, you could argue, as fall oh, camp no is. Question. So what's that message to Yeah, us? so the message is everything we're doing, we're building towards something, right? The growth that we have right now in the, in the winter workouts, we're in the OD weight room this morning. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll be in the OD weight room, we'll be in the Kelly Indoor on the turf. Um, and those are growing and building towards spring ball, mm -hmm. right? So uh, even two weeks ago, we're, we're acclimating, doing some sprints, getting some sprint distance and some volume in to be ready for stations that'll start this week and going through some hard things together, be ready for some competition a week uh, from now, to be ready for spring ball, building towards spring ball. So, you know, we've talked about Golden Colorado, we've talked about the 23 schedule, we've talked about those things, and you know, in the macro perspective, big picture stuff, right? But yeah. right now, it's right back to no, right? The best focused energy we can have in the OD weight room this morning in this workout, building towards spring ball. And then when we attack spring ball, Right, that's building for the summer, and, and you know these depth charts building for the summer, um, earning the right to play, and, and giving yourself an opportunity to to play this fall. And then the summer workouts are for camp. Yeah. Camp is for the opener. You know, so like everything builds towards yeah. something, and that's yeah. exactly what we're talking about right now. Yeah, um, is bringing tremendous focused energy every single time and getting better every single day for spring ball. No doubt the head coach at Grand Valley is a great job, and I know you're excited about yeah. it and super excited to have you. Um, but what is it like most of the time when somebody makes a coaching change or a coaching change happens, it's because the program isn't yeah. doing very well, right. okay? So <laughs> you have a little different challenge. Yeah, sure. What is that like? Yeah, I think there's, Steve, there's two different ends to this, right? <laughs> right. Either they weren't very good. Right. They weren't very good at what they were doing, and it's a rebuild. Right. Right. And that's a, a, obviously a mindset and a different energy there. And then, or you're really, really good at what you're doing, tremendous success, and then you have other professional opportunities. What Matt right. Mitchell had, right? So, right. obviously, we're over here, and so it's a, it's a obviously a different mindset, a different focus, a different energy um, than this rebuild over here. Very rarely is it going to be that middle of the road program, sure. correct? So. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, the expectations are high, but it circles right back to what I just said. Um, what's right in front of us right now? Yeah, we've got macro plans and, and we know what the schedule is and we know what we have to build towards that, but it's in that weight room this morning, in the Kelly Indoor tomorrow, um, building towards spring ball and that's what's right in front of our face and that's what's important right now. How do you, in general, how do you get ready to be a head coach? Yeah. I mean. You go from, in some cases, a guy's a position coach or a coordinator, but it's different. Sure. Come when the lights are on, you're going to face the national runner-up, your first game on the road. Exactly right. And it's fourth and two at your own 35 late in the game, whatever. How do you get ready for that? We're going for it. <laughs> yeah. But how do you, like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Is this a no. bunch of, like, I, I go have coffee with people all over the well, place? Or how do you yeah, get ready? Steve, it's a combination of all those things. It's... Um, when you're in those positions, and I always felt like this as a as a position coach, right? Uh, from my days at Wayne, from my uh, currently uh, or the job that I just had as offense line tight end coach, run game coordinator at Grand Valley State, is if you want to be in that seat, like respect that seat. And to me, to be a great head coach, I was going to be the very best position coach, run game coordinator yeah. that I could be in the country. Um, and then you got to be a world class observer, right? There's things that 
you know, the, I'll do exactly like Matt Mitchell does. There's things that I do a little bit different, just like with Paul Winters. And then there is that, that element of preparation in terms of if you want to be the best, go learn from the best. So through clinics, through professional connections, meeting with uh, people that have had great deals of success as a head coach, um, and picking their brain about those things. What, as a first-time head coach, what did you, you do that you really, really liked? What did you do that you wouldn't do again if you, 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 <laughs> you know, had the next opportunity? So right. I think just you know, cultivating all those different experiences as, um, as a position coach, I'm going to do my very best to make his job as easy as possible, um, understanding and observing that role, and then professionally developing for this opportunity and being ready for it when it comes along. A lot of good things the Lakers are already doing. I mean, it's a great program, sure. so a lot of good things in place. What, what is the Scott Wooster imprint that you want to leave here? I mean, obviously, you want yeah. wins. Sure. I mean, like style or culture. Or what, what, what says Scott Wooster about Laker football? Yeah, and I think, you know, and, and I've said this all the way through, um, when I came to Grand Valley State, there was a, a ton of alignment with Matt Mitchell and the culture, the values, the philosophy of Grand Valley State football. So there's a lot of those things that will be yeah. very, very similar. Um, I think there is maybe a, a slight difference in being an offensive-minded head coach. There's a little bit different there, right? Um, and I think you'll probably see that on, on Saturday evening, Saturday afternoons. Um, we're still going to play amazing defense and, you know, being the number yeah. one defense in the country. But uh, maybe that's a, a little bit of my stamp. Um, and I think there are some elements, just me personally, in my experiences through, uh, you know, family experiences, coaching experience, just this, this idea of belief, right? This idea that there's a reality out there that you haven't put your hands on quite yet, hmm. but it's there, right? And we're going to go declare that reality. So I think when you see it, maybe it's not super tangible, um, but you'll be up there in the box and be like, okay, I know what he was saying back there in what is this, February 6th? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, I, I see it a little bit. Yeah, that's maybe the, the, the Scott Wooster, the, the Coach Wu stamp on that thing, right? <laughs> little analytics, little gut, yeah, little it's, all it's that. Like yeah. A, yeah, yeah, I think there is that duality, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, the, the mind, spirit, body connection, when all those things come together, right, the, that's, uh, that's when the, the true magic happens. That's absolutely. when uh, you really have some fun. So maybe it is a little bit of that. Yeah, absolutely. One more before we let you go. Um, every coach has their own approach to rivalries. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't want to get you in trouble with, you know, trying to say everything uh, toward rivals, but I know that you don't want to run from them and, and what those represent. So how do you approach that with guys? Is that a, hey, uh, this is another game. Let's take care of business. There's other people who are like, no way. We do a little bit of every practice we sure. focus on. Where do you sure. fall in the rivalries? No, and I think the coolest part about growing up in the Midwest, and especially my generation, uh, the Ohio State, Michigan, right? Yeah. Uh, Woody Hayes, Bo Beckler, and okay, I'm going to say it. I grew up a Buckeye. Uh, oh, my mom gosh. has since moved back from Ohio. She's oh. from Ohio, <laughs> uh, but my dad was a Wolverine, right? Okay. Go blue through and true, and um, just growing up in that, and just just loving every minute of those Saturdays in yeah. late November, right? Yeah. If we were down in Ohio for the, the the harvest, and we'd watch that game. And there was my dad isolated with all the Buckeyes <laughs> around him. And then if we'd watch it back here, it was, you know, my mom and I or me being isolated with all the Wolverines. <laughs> and you'd go to school and I'd wear my scarlet and gray and everybody would be, uh, you know, kind of chirping at you. So I think I love that about college football. Yeah. Absolutely love that about college football. And the stories of Woody Hayes pushing his car across the border because he wasn't going to buy gas in, <laughs> yeah. in Michigan and everything else that goes along with that and Bo and – and all those things. So I think, you know, obviously us going north up 131 and them coming down, coming down south on 131. Um, that's what all this is about. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, you know, you go right through the recruiting battles and we'll see each other in camps and we'll see each other all summer long. Um, all our guys know each other, right? Um, they've been to camps together. And so to me, well, shoot, I was just out in Las Vegas uh, at the East West Shrine game with, you know, checking out Quentin out there and yeah. supporting him. And then there's Caleb Murphy on the other side, you know. <laughs> so that, like that just, that's what college football is all about. So to me, embrace it, right? Embrace it. You know, the anchor bone trophy um, to get out of Super Region 3, right? You know that you know what you got to do. Yep. Um, so, yep. yeah, like you come to Grand Valley State 
for that reason, Steve. Like, that's yeah. why you come yeah. here. Yeah. That's why I came here is to, you know, <laughs> no fear, like run right at it, you know, and yeah. maybe this got Worcester and Tony and East. <laughs> and that's, again, that's, you know, Ferris State and Grand Valley. Tony and East Scott Wooster, like all those things make it so much fun. And uh, yeah, I'm going to embrace it. I love it. Absolutely positively love it, Steve. No, that sounds sounds great. I'm excited. I, I got some eligibility. Yeah, I don't know if I can help yeah, you. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I, I'm really excited just to see, you know, the, the program as, as you're going to lead that. Obviously, Mitch did a fantastic awesome. job. Uh, and, and we're excited for him, too, yeah. you know, with his opportunities. You have, what do we got here at uh, September, right? Yeah, end of August. End of August. End of August, yeah, uh, open up. So we'll get on a, a charter flight Wednesday and fly out to Golden, yeah. Colorado. So yeah. it'll gonna be, be here, here quick. quick. <laughs> gonna be here, Steve. <laughs> gonna be here. It was great to have you yes. here. Uh, congratulations on the job. We look forward to good things ahead. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Steve. We'll be right back with more of the Grand Valley State Sports Report here in WGVU. TVSU women's basketball continues to sit atop the GLIAC standings with a few student athletes making the most of their time on the court. Tom Cleary has the story for us. Though Mike Williams had one of his strongest and deepest recruiting classes a year ago, only one player from that group earned first year playing time. This season though, all of last year's recruits have gotten thrown into the mix, including Nicole Kameen, a regular starter on the front line, and Lexi Plitzewhite, who's gotten big minutes in the backcourt. Through the recent win at home against Wisconsin Parkside, Kameen has been a double-figure scorer in half of her team's games and barely took any time at getting situated on the court after her redshirt season. First time you get thrown the game at the college level and you're playing major minutes, there's an adaptation process. And I think once you have some confidence, once you make some shots, once you make some plays, you get more minutes under your belt, then you just you feel like you're all right, you've been doing this for a long time, and I think that's the spot that she's in right now. Definitely some pressure, and I'd say like a shock too, because like you were taken off a year, and you haven't played a basketball game in a whole year, so it was definitely, it took some getting used to, and like once you got in, get going, then it was good, but definitely took some time before I got comfortable again. Lexi Plitzelwhite was born in West Michigan while her mom, Dawn, was in the midst of her coaching tenure here that culminated in a national championship in 2006. And while her current coach was her mother's assistant back then, Lexi could have ended up anywhere before choosing Grand Valley after a prep career in South Dakota. I felt confident in the community that Grand Valley had, and I'd been a lot of places and I've had a lot of experiences, and I knew that Coach Williams and the staff that we have, are they just really care about our genuine well-being, and that's, how we perform and it's also how we do off the court. They want us to be the best versions of ourselves. Obviously after watching her play, she brings that you know toughness to the table and in her understanding of basketball. You know, she's a she's a point guard, doesn't get rattled, can handle pressure. And she's done on a big stage in AU against real good teams and and we thought that's something she could carry over and do it here. Nicole Kameen had her first 20 point college game recently at home against Parkside, which was hardly a surprise after a standout high school career in Escanaba. But she's raised eyebrows this campaign with her play at both ends of the court. She was the point guard, had the green light, and, and really developed a, what we call you know, a really nice three-point shot. You know, she can she can get to the rim. Um, you know, she can shoot the three, hit the pull-up, and then obviously with her athleticism and her length, you know, being being 5'11 and really athletic, she can really defend. I think the big thing was defense. You go high school game, you don't play defense like the whole game. It's kind of just offense, but uh, it took. I'd say like a whole year before it was like, oh, defense is like very important. I'm still getting used to the defense here, but it's going good. And though he's known Lexi Plitzelwhite all her life, Mike Williams trusted assistant coach Phil Sayers with deciding on whether or not Grand Valley would be a good fit for her. As such, she's now the geographical conduit in between her brother AJ, a starting sophomore guard on the men's team at the University of South Dakota, and Dawn, who's now in her first year as the head women's coach at West Virginia. You watch Dawn play when she played and coached. You watch Lexi play. I think there's a there's a toughness to them that uh, you know, and, and the competitiveness that they both have, and that's probably the similarities. But outside of that, they're you know, she's her own person, and they're 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 different. It's pretty comical. I feel like I have a game to watch every night between my mom and my brother or myself playing, but. 
she, I mean, she trusts Coach Williams and she knows what it's like to coach. So it's, you know, just trying to figure it out. She knows the pressures and the stress that come with it. So no, she doesn't coach me, but she'll encourage me. Last season, Grand Valley's bid for a national title got short circuited by a pair of injuries to Riley Bisball that left Williams team shorthanded on its way to the final four. But with Nicole Kameen, Lexi Plitzewhite, and four other redshirt players from last year now seeing significant time, the Lakers are hoping their deep bench this spring will be a launching pad toward more championship hardware. For the Grand Valley State Sports Report, I'm Tom Cleary. And that's all the time that we have this week here on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. GVSU men's and women's basketball will hit the road for the final time during the regular season. They'll head to Saginaw Valley on Thursday as they take on the Cardinals. Tip-off for the women is scheduled for 6 p.m., followed by the men at 8 p.m. They'll then head over to Wayne State for a battle with the Warriors in Detroit on Saturday. Game time for the women is set for 1, followed by the men at 3. GVSU Swimming and Diving will co-host the GLIAC Championships this week in Holland, Michigan. The meet taking place at the Holland Aquatic Center will run from Wednesday to Saturday as the Lakers look to add another piece of hardware to their collection. For upcoming games as well as live broadcasts of every Laker athletic program, visit gvsulakers.com. For more of this show, head over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updated videos and highlights all year long. For the entire crew here at WGVU, I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Have a great week, Laker Nation, and as always, anchor up.